Okay, Ted and Tom, tell us about Country Style, where you made it, and why it never went to air. Well, well Tim, uh, we, were, we were doing a national TV show in Toronto, Canada at CFTO, and it was so cold up there, so our manager, Edmund Samuels, who was very well respected in Sydney, knew Jim Oswin at Channel 7, ATN, and he knew the people at our transit studios. So he wrote us back and said, I can get you a, uh, a series in Australia. And so we came up with the concept, country style, it was really our concept. And then Leon Becker, he was the producer of the show, and he relied a lot on our expertise and our knowledge in country music and we having be, and then we became associate producers yeah we became show. associate producers and having been to hollywood uh from 57 to 62 in a, a year in canada we knew a little bit about television and we, most of the shows back then tim as you know were on tape and so we said leon look we'd like to do this on 16 millimeter and we did the very first colored tv show in australia the, the first episode was done in color Unfortunately, uh, we don't know where the color episode is right now. And the reason why, though, Tom, it's important. It was so expensive to do shows in color back then that we just, that's the reason why we only did one episode. And so the, the plan was, Tim, to do 26 episodes and to get a sponsor. Well, one evening we're, we're, we're filming two episodes and Marty Robbins, who was probably the hottest country star back in 64, he had three or four big major hits. He was truly an international. No, but Tom, that was, you back up there. That was in, in 63 when Jim Mars and ATN, we were under contract. They said, we want you to fly into Nashville and sign up Marty Robbins. Well, they bought us, you know, first class tickets on Pan Am. We, and we, we had a, a room at the Andrew Jackson. And back then, Tim, uh, and the Andrew Jackson was the hub of the, the DJ convention. Well, you, you stayed at the hotel and in the lobby, all you had to do was just stay in the coffee shop. Everybody from Johnny Cash to Jimmy Dean, Hank Snow, they all came in. And then in, anyway, they, and that's where all the stars would come. But, so we landed, no, hold on now. <laughs> yeah. the, we landed in, in LA. And so we had all this information. We go and meet with Marty's manager, Marty Lando his agent and manager, we said, because Marty was so hot. White Sports Goat, I guess, was one of the longest playing records ever in the history of country music in Australia. Well, it was a, it was a pop, number one pop, number one country, then Al Paso, Devil Woman, and, and Bob Rogers from TUE and John Laws from 2GB. They loved Marty Robbins. They played the heck out of Marty. So Marty and they said, no, 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 no. And this was in October of 1963. So he said, no, Marty Robbins not interested in going to Australia. He, he, no, he wouldn't like to travel. So anyway, we flew into Nashville, checked into the hotel, and we had WSM follow us around, and all that'll be on, that'll, you, you'll see where us, we're talking to Johnny Cash and Jimmy Dean, Hank Snow, anybody of notoriety. But anyway, to cut through the chase, Tim, <laughs> uh, we get up, and back in those days, everybody dressed in tailor-made suits ties and you know how it was back then in the 60s and 70s so they had a coffee shop there so ted and i would go down for breakfast and who should be sitting over in the corner is marty robbins and his band the teardrop band with bobby sykes don winters louis dunn and jackie pruitt so we had never met marty robbins but so ted and i walk up and uh, marty we, was we a were pretty bar brassy, brassy <laughs> fellows back then didn't but we? anyway <laughs> marty stood up and we said uh, you marty robbins said, yeah i said look i'm tom lagarde one of the lagarde twins this was my brother ted and this is the true true story so help me god <laughs> and i said marty you know it's a darn shame that you can't come to australia in february i said when we have the greatest weather in the world, 85 degrees, we have the most beautiful beaches in all the world. And we found out that he hated the cold weather. And, and get this, <laughs> I said, and the beautiful water. And I said, but most important of all, I said, we have the prettiest women in the world, Marty. And this is a true story. He said, book me for two weeks. And I said, are you fair dinkum? Well, fair dinkum, as you know. And but he said, he said, what in the world is fair dinkum? <laughs> I, I, said, I said, that's telling the truth. He put his hand out. We shook hands. He said, book me for two weeks. I said, well, your manager, Marty Landau, said you couldn't travel to Australia. He said, listen, mate, he works for me. I don't work but for he him. He didn't say mate. He said, listen, Tom, he, he works for me. 
I tell him where I want to go. So we booked go. him for two weeks. So when he came down, we're down at Bondi Beach one morning early, and about and Reg Lindsay was there with us. So and Dan, you have to bear in mind that he didn't like he, he hated TV. He turned down the tennis uni Ford show, the Dinah Shaw show, the Ed Sullivan show, Perry the, Como show, the Perry Como show. He didn't like television, and so you go on from there. So anyway, we're getting ready to do two episodes at Country Style, and who should show up on the set is Marty Robbins and the Teardrop Band. And he said, hey guys, want me to do a couple of songs? So we said, go ahead. We had to rearrange the program. Leon Becker, the producer and director, almost had a heart attack. And so he did Devil Woman in one show and El Paso the other. And the folks are gonna see that on Country Style. Also, we had our good friend, Smokey Dawson. That we had traveled with, with, with the circuses. Smokey was a great, great, uh, West and well, he knew a lot about us. You know, he was truly Australian, and we traveled the circuses, circuit with him in the sideshows, and uh, then we had Reg Lindsay, well, all the Australian uh, Rex Dallas, and um, so lot. they'll see them all on country style. Yeah, yeah. And can you imagine? Can you imagine, folks? Here we are sitting at this beautiful. Uh, Union Station. Station, Union Station. This was a railway station years yeah. ago here in Nashville. And um, Tim Daly, incidentally, is behind the camera. He's <laughs> shooting this right now. <laughs> and here we are 46 years later, and Country Style is going to air. I want to tell you something. Life is so beautiful, so now, wonderful. Now, uh, but Tim asked, how come we did 14 episodes of Country Style, and the reason why it didn't go, I think they showed one episode one Saturday morning, is that Digby Wolf was the host of Review 60, 61, 62, and then he was making demands, uh, wanted to, you know, more money in the Rolls Royce, so the, the general manager, uh, Jim Oswin, uh, Jim Oswin, so th they let him go. But here's the thing, this is, this is how, it's amazing how, how life unfolds itself. Uh, I always say God's in control. It's just it's unbelievable. So uh, Ed, Edmund Samuels, who's probably probably one of the greatest Australian men. Well, Ed Ben Chifley, the Prime Minister of Australia, said to Eddie, next to me, you're the greatest minded Australian that I know. And Eddie Samuels was a top chemist. And ben Chifley, the Prime Minister, would call him at his chemist shop on Castle Ray Street opposite the Hotel Australia, say, Edmund, you have my medicine ready. And Eddie would take it out, get a taxi, go out to the airport, and he would make sure that it was put on the plane to Canberra. He's, it was with Edmund Samuel's Headache Bar. It was opposite the most famous hotel back then where all of the big stars stayed at the Hotel Australia. Even Hopalong Cassidy in, in 54, and Eddie had his office up on the uh, second floor, yes. right opposite the hotel. Australia. What a shame they ever pulled that beautiful hotel down because General MacArthur, anybody of notoriety, stayed at the Hotel Australia. But anyway, Eddie got with Jim Oswin, and one night, Tim, we're, we're filming a couple of more episodes of Country Style, and sh who should walk on the set is Jim Osmond, the general manager of ATN Channel 7. And we didn't know. We thought, well, just general, he's with, he's with our men, Edmund Samuel. We, did, we were so involved in, in producing and, and getting the episode because, you know, we had limited funds at that time on our transit. So now the thing is, is the furthest thought from our minds, Tim, was that we, be, we, we would be taken off country style and host the number one variety show, which ATN had come up with, a new a new show called Studio A. Well, you'd drive uh, you'd drive home, you know, in Sydney's like New York, and all the newsstands that have T uh, John Law selected to host the new variety show Studio Bob A. Bob Rogers. Then the next week, Bob Rogers, who was uh, for two UE, and then this went on for a number of weeks, and we're driving home one afternoon, and it says on the big. They'd have all this in the press now. TV shock of the year. So we were living at 441 Alfred Street. We bought some new apartments in a beautiful apartment building overlooking the Sydney Harbour in North Sydney. And uh, I said to Tom, I said, we thought the, the Prime Minister died or the President or one of the Hollywood stars. He buys a Sun, the Sun uh, newspaper 
and on the front page, there's a big picture of Tom and I, it says, Queensland Hillbillies selected to host <laughs> Studio A. Well, oh, it was the, it, the headlines was TV shock of the year. Yeah. It was a shock, and we, so we <laughs> pulled over to, to see Edmund Samuels, our manager at that particular time. What a beautiful human being. Somebody ought to do a story on his life. One of the greatest Australians ever lived. Well, but, let me put it here, Tom. No, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> oh, Edmund Samuels was the first Australian to, to write the first Australian musical called The Highwayman. And it was shown in Melbourne and Sydney. So we said, Eddie, what's going on? He said, well, I just signed you guys to host the new uh, show. We said, oh, no, no. We were country singers. He said, Ted and Tom, now listen, don't say anything. He said... You're the Lagarde twins. You're not going to change. You'll be, you'll be dressed in tuxedos. And then Perry Como had a successful show where he sat on a couple of stools and sang requests. And so that was Eddie's idea that we would sit on a couple of stools and he wrote the theme song, Twin Celios, Twin Celios, that's how we sign our name. Twin Celios, Twin Celios, we always sign the same. And we, we'd, we'd uh, sing requests from the people. Now, let me the take producer, over. Hold on, hey, let, me, let me take over for a while. You're yakking too much. Uh, you, you're the youngest. Let me, let me get a uh, word in edgewise here. You'll probably have to edit some of this, Tim. But